Allosaurus is one of my favorite dinosaurs like ever. It is the quintessential dinosaur. Chances are, if you were to ask somebody who doesn't know much about dinosaurs to draw one, what they put down on paper would probably resemble an Allosaurus. It's a big enough dinosaur to ride into battle, but its size doesn't hinder its movement like some larger theropods. It has some sick horns above its eyes too, and god I remember it being the first thorn in my side in the Zoo Tycoon because those things have a temper. But one thing I've noticed when researching Allosaurus is that nobody agrees on just how big they actually were. When I went and saw an Allosaurus in person at the museum, I got the impression it was a huge animal, but that it wasn't that big compared to other theropods like Tyrannosaurus. So just how big were these dudes? Allosaurus was a genus of Jurassic theropod dinosaurs belonging to the clad Allosauridia, which includes Acrocanthosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, Giganotosaurus, and all of those other big boys. It kind of makes sense when you look at them, especially because of that angular skull shape. One thing I like about Allosaurus, and this may be because I'm a nerd for taxonomy, but there are several identified species for its genus, including Allosaurus fragilis, the type species, Europius, and Gymidseni. There has even been debate over assigning the massive Sorophaganax under the Allosaurus classification, calling it Allosaurus maximus. Either way, this visually similar dinosaur is classified as an Allosaurid. Most commonly found in the Morrison Formation in Western North America, Allosaurus was most certainly an apex predator, and evidence of bite marks on Stegosaurus armor plates suggests it was a voracious and aggressive one at that. So, how big do these lads get? Allosaurus fragilis had an average length of 8.5 meters, or 28 feet. American Museum of Natural History Specimen 680 reached 9.7 meters, or 32 feet in length. Big Al, the Allosaurus showcased in Walking with Dinosaurs, was determined to be an Allosaurus gymidseni. Researchers determined that the specimen was a juvenile, being about 87% grown at 26 feet long, which would make him about 30 feet long when fully grown, if I did that math right. Go cross multiplication. I'd say a safe bet for now is 30 feet long if somebody were to ask you how long Allosaurus got, but in James Madison's book Allosaurus Fragilis, a revised osteology, Osteology is the study of structure and function of bones. He makes the argument that an incredible amount of Allosaurus bones have been collected over the years, more than almost any dinosaur, and yet most of these bones are fragmentary. He suggests that fragments might set the range of Allosaurus sizes out to 40 feet, a huge size increase, and making Allosaurus one of the largest theropods to exist. And even if this isn't correct, we have Sorophaganax, which is literally just a 38 foot long Allosaurus with a different name. When I saw the Allosaurus design in Jurassic World Battle at Big Rock, I was stunned. I remember thinking that thing is huge, like way past any size estimate we have for Allosaurus. However, with Allosaurids like Sorophaganax around, maybe this depiction isn't so wildly inaccurate after all. Also, I want to quickly address something. A lot of people tell me to stop dissing Jurassic Park because they love it and it's just a movie, dinosaurs are genetically modified, etc etc. Let me be clear. I love Jurassic Park. I never diss it. It's my favorite collection of books and movies of all time. It's just that it's the mainstream public's primary place to see dinosaurs, so what they see is what they believe. And that's why it frustrates me when they show stuff that's so far from the truth that it hurts. Dinosaurs are definitely cool enough to be depicted as they really were, and not all oversized and monsterified. That being said, without Jurassic Park, dinosaurs would hardly get any attention at all, so I will always be grateful. What I hope to convey in this video, and pretty much in all of my videos, is that names are pretty arbitrary. They guide us to a general understanding of the dinosaurs, but the dinosaur age was a very long one, and they evolved and changed throughout those couple hundred million years a lot. Try to zoom out when you talk about dinosaurs. For example, maybe don't think in terms of Allosaurus, but rather Allosaurid, Tyrannosaurus, or Tyrannosaurid. If you were to travel back in time to the Jurassic period and you identified what you thought was an Allosaurus, you'd probably be more right just to call it an Allosaurid because animals are constantly evolving, and I believe we should think of them more fluidly. As always, I hope you enjoyed my video, remember to keep an open mind, and I'll see you next time.